Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name's Katie, I talk about sustainable fashion and today I wanted to talk about how my year of five went and what my sustainable intentions are for the next year. Um, it's really important to me that I'm as sustainable as possible in my wardrobe uh, and I practice what I preach and yeah, this year was probably the hardest for me in terms of trying to stick to that goal. I decided to take the rule of five, I think in January, and it was at a point when I hadn't bought anything for the year anyway, um, but I knew I wanted a few items. And I read the statistics, something like, in order for the world to stop overproducing so much, people can only buy five new items a year, which is obviously where the rule of five comes from. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact statistic, but that's kind of what I took away from it, that we have to limit our wardrobes as much as possible um, in order to stop overproduction and stop asking and giving permission to brands to keep producing. If we stop buying, they can't, there's no one to sell it to, so they will have to stop producing. Um, so I decided that, that was what I was gonna do this year and I think it went pretty well, to be honest. Well, the fact that I'm planning on doing it next year is a good indication of how good it went. Um, but I found that I had to be really intentional with what I bought and I planned in advance, which is something I was doing anyway, but not this meticulously, I guess, um, since I knew I was so limited to what I was gonna buy that I couldn't make any impulse decisions, which I was doing in previous years. I did find it harder as the year went on. I was buying more, so I only had like, you know, a few items to go. The number of items I could buy was dwindling and I had a bit of a personal sort of revelation in my wardrobe thinking like I didn't really like anything and I didn't like my style and I wanted to change it and that was a really hard moment to have that revelation when I was only allowed to buy five items first hand um in the end I managed it I well I managed to buy a lot of new items second hand um new to me second hand obviously um and that was great for me it really, really improved my wardrobe, I believe. And now I go to open it and I don't have that same feeling of like dread. Oh my God, what am I gonna wear? I know what I'm gonna wear and that's really nice. But I did film this video um, back in September, October when I was really going through it. And it's a bit depressing. Honestly, I'm having one of those days right now where all I want to do is shop. I just wanna ignore work and ignore like how I'm feeling and just shop because I know it'll make me feel better um but I also feel so overwhelmed by the idea of trawling through like Depop and Vintage and eBay and all those places that I actually have to know what I want and all I want to do is go on to like Zara or H&M even if it's not because I want the clothes, because I know they're shit, I know they're bad quality, but I just wanna be told what to buy. Um, honestly, I think it's just trying to find my personal style is starting to grate on me now. Um, it's really hard and fashion is normally something that's supposed to be fun and people enjoy it. And I just haven't felt like that in a while now. Um, but I'm equally really frustrated about the fact that I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> so it's just kind of this perpetual cycle where I feel like I have nothing to wear. I'll get inspired to go on Depop or Vinted and try to like upgrade my wardrobe. And then I just feel really overwhelmed by the amount of stuff on there. I don't end up buying anything and then that's fine and I have a break until next time I need to wear something and I realize oh shit like I didn't buy anything and I still have nothing to wear. Trying to limit myself to buying five items a year is really trying because I know for a fact I could go on to H&M or another fashion website and find something that I think will look good within about 10 minutes and ignore the fact that I won't like it in a month 
it could just be instant like gratification for now and i'm really trying to ignore that and keep going because i know it'll be worth it and i really want to do this challenge and prove to myself that i don't need to buy this many items but it is challenging it's it's called a challenge for a reason i guess anyway let's go through what i ended up buying first and then we can go into like you know the analysis of that so the first item i bought was my Garni boo bag and honestly i'm in love with this bag i'm going to look after it till i die it's so so cute um and i was thinking about this bag for a good six months i believe after it was you know debuted on the runway i was coveting this bag for so so many months so when i finally got my hands on it it was such a great way to kick off the rule of five like with a bang it was just yes i knew that i had been saving up for this bag i purposely not bought anything expensive because i wanted this to be my first item so i didn't feel bad spending the money i spent on a bag that i knew i was really enamored with honestly the amount i've worn it now it's the cost per wear is like 10 pounds <laughs> despite the really high pri price tag of it originally um so i know it was worth it the next thing i kind of bought was actually a trend um I had seen, I think, Emma Chamberlain wearing boxer shorts early summer and I immediately really, really liked the idea. It just kind of ticked all my boxes of like comfortable and cute and, you know, a little bit masculine, but put it in a feminine way sort of thing. Um, and I bought them from a fast fashion brand actually that I don't want to name, um, but only because I didn't want to buy them secondhand, knowing that there was probably hygiene issues there. And I love them. Again, I was, I think because I was so intentional about which ones I bought, bought them in a really classic pattern, knowing that I was only gonna buy one set. And then because also it was kind of a, you know, you get that feeling, don't you, with newness um, in your wardrobe, you wanna wear it and wear it and wear it all the time. And because I really had deprived myself of that, it was like summer when I bought these and I'd only bought one thing so far that year. I kind of felt that on the extreme. I was like, I need to wear these boxes with everything. It was a really good feeling. Um, so I definitely got my cost per wear out of them too. The next item I bought was also in summer. Um, it was actually a little bit of an impulse buy and I have like some mixed feelings about it, but it was this white blouse um, and I bought it while I was out shopping with my, with my nanny um, and she kind of influenced me to buy it a little bit. So maybe I wouldn't have bought it if I was alone. Um, it was, you know, a couple of sizes too big for me and it was in sale and I don't know, she really liked it on me and I don't know if that was more people pleasing than anything um but i do really enjoy it i have worn it a couple of times since and i'm happy with it and it has great happy memories of that day um but this is probably the first purchase where i don't know if i would go back and make the same purchase as i like you know compared to my first and second items from my rule of five the next item i bought and i think this was like late september um, just as we were kind of transitioning into fall and the weather was dropping, I bought cowboy boots and honestly, I've wanted long, tall boots um, for a while now. So you could say this was like a couple of years in the making, another really, really intentional purchase, one I knew I would like. Um, and I'm really happy with them. I bought them from a small business. I know for a 100% fact that I want more boots in my wardrobe now just based on how I feel about this. So yeah, I think they were a great purchase um, and they really helped me discover like what style I was liking at that time when everything else in my wardrobe wasn't really working for me. And the last item was actually just after my wardrobe clear out video that I did where I was kind of stressing about life, but <laughs> specifically my wardrobe. Um, I had to throw away one of my classic white t-shirts, pretty much my only classic white t-shirt now because, sorry, I didn't throw it away. It transitioned into a pajama t-shirt because it was ratty and had holes in it and I didn't want to let it go. I've, I wear it to bed now. Um, but I knew I needed another one for my wardrobe because a classic white tee is called a classic white tee for a reason. So I bought one online 
just based on more the fit and the style of the t-shirt than sustainable credentials to be honest um I knew that this was something that was going to stay in my wardrobe for ages so even if this was I can't remember but if you even if it's like normal cotton versus organic cotton I know that the way I act with it is going to be sustainable so yeah I bought this and again I have been wearing it so much so really I had a great year in terms of buying what actually worked for me and yeah just being really intentional with everything I did realize what I'm buying the most is bags and accessories um obviously I bought two tops but I'm not sure I would have bought the blouse normally um if it weren't for you know the conditions of the day so potentially what I would have done instead is bought another bag or another pair of shoes um because I have a thing about buying that sort of stuff secondhand um not bags because I've bought a lot of my bags secondhand but shoes um I don't like the idea of wearing someone else's shoes I'm a little bit funny when it comes to secondhand stuff like that that feels too intimate um like I said on my blog recently but yeah that's what I realized that majority of stuff I can buy secondhand and it'll be absolutely fine and if I am going to do the rule of five again which I am planning to do I should save that stuff for items that I don't want to you know shop someone else's version of it I want to have that firsthand but anyway let's quickly talk about my sustainable intentions for the year in the hopes that it inspires you to take on your own so like I've been saying I'm going to be doing year of five once again next year because honestly I didn't find it that hard for me um I think I probably would have come in at about seven to eight items if I wasn't purposely curbing myself so the fact that I'm already so low it doesn't really feel like that much of a challenge to me to do year of five um however I do think if I set myself the challenge of buying nothing then it would stress me out so much whilst I'm still in like a really volatile state with my wardrobe I know that I'm going to want to keep working on it and expanding next year and having the idea that I can't buy anything for it will just cause me extra stress and I'll downward spiral and I'll go back to the whole mantra of I have nothing to wear what's the point in getting dressed blah 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 I, I know myself I'm not gonna say that I can do that however it's a potential for the year after next or even the year after that once I've reached the point where I'm really happy with my style so if you're in that point right now this could be a great thing for you to try either a rule of five year if you haven't done it before or a no buy year if you're like a level 10 expert and you know you think you could do it hats off to you please let me know how it goes another one of my intentions next year is to take this same approach when it comes to homeware I've had to buy quite a lot of things for our new flat this year because we moved back in after the renovations um so I haven't had that much of a choice about whether I continue to buy stuff for the flat but now we're in a place with the flat where it does feel like we don't need anything else bar like you know one or two pieces but certainly not at the rate that I've been buying this year and I've decided to be really intentional about how much I buy for it next year it's really easy now with like fast furniture being a thing I think Venetia Lamana coined that term um it's really easy to change your decor to seasonal pieces or like buy stuff that you don't need just to be on trend with homeware which you know shouldn't even be a thing in my opinion you should just buy what makes you happy regardless of trends or what everyone else has so it can be really easy to fall into the trap I guess is what I'm saying with fast fashion with fast furniture but I'm going to be really intentional about that next year and really try limit myself to only necessities um more of a personal intention I am planning on doing a lot of traveling next year so I need to be as sustainable as possible when it comes to getting from point A to point B but yeah that's just a little personal thing for me if you have any tips on traveling sustainably then I would love to hear them really really would enjoy and benefit from that <laughs> um and I guess another sustainable intention I have is really picking up the amount I'm renting um 
I don't have too many fancy events to go to, but I wanna make my life more of a fancy event in itself. I want to be wearing pieces that make me happier and trying new pieces and, you know, renting designer when I want to, but also just renting high street stuff. Um, just so I feel like there's newness in my wardrobe without having to buy into it and then it becoming old and then I'm, you know, feeling like I need more and just repeating that cycle. I think renting is a great way to escape that, you know, rent a coat for a month and then you have a new coat for a month. You can put it all over your Instagram feed and then next month you can rent another one. And it's, do you know what I mean? Like, I think specifically a piece like a coat is such a good idea for renting because in winter, a coat is your whole outfit. So if you have a new one like every month, every half month, if you need even more newness, you're just getting such a new key piece in your wardrobe every time. I feel like it's such a good idea. But I do know this isn't always the most affordable way for people to do this, um, which is why I'm popping my by rotation uh, referral code in the link in bio here and I very much encourage you guys to use it if by rotation works in your country. I don't know if it's just UK. Alternatively, uh, I know Higher Street in the UK has a really good option of doing five for 55 pounds. Um, so you get to rent five pieces across the whole month um, for 55 pounds. Obviously that's not the most affordable. I mean, it's not bad, but it's probably not something that everyone can afford every month, but you know, like next month into January, sorry, this month into January, I have like five, four events I wanna rent for. So this scheme would definitely work for that. Um, so yeah, if you have a really busy month coming up, consider that. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna be trying to rent a lot more into 2024. Gosh, that feels weird to say. Um, yeah, and just trying to invest in my wardrobe more um, secondhand or, you know, buying key pieces that I know are gonna last, even if that means I'm, means I'm spending more on them. I think that's probably my plan for next year. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping that it will help me continue my style journey. And I've been loving doing YouTube. I really, really enjoy it. Just for the simple fact of it makes me get dressed. It makes me try new things. It makes me look for inspiration on Pinterest and find things that I wouldn't have put together myself. Um, so I really, really appreciate all of you that have been watching, all of you that have subscribed, and I hope I can continue it into next year. Anyway, thank you so much guys for listening to me um, and for, you know, being with me on this journey. And yeah, I'll speak to you really soon. Bye.